Hi, we are the 36th District Democrats, and today we are interviewing Ben Gittenstein for Seattle School Board uh, District 1, position number three. You can Hi, start. everybody. Oh, yeah. can I go ahead? Sorry. Yeah, go All ahead. Right, great. Hi, everybody. My name is Ben Gittenstein. I am a candidate for District 3. Thanks very much for having me. Um, apologies if I have a slightly low quality video connection here. So um, hopefully you can see through that and focus on the issues. Uh, I am I, I, in my next question, I'll tell you a little bit about why I'm running. So I thought maybe what I would do with the in the intro is tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in Seattle for about 20 years now. I've got two kids, one of whom is in the Seattle public school system, the other whom left the Seattle public school system after um, after in during COVID. I uh, have been a parent in Seattle and have loved being a parent in Seattle. I've loved the Seattle public school system itself, uh, but I have some grave concerns. Before this and outside of my life as, a, as an activist, you know, working to improve Seattle public schools, I work in technology. I've worked for Google. I work for Google now. Before that, I worked at Microsoft and Amazon. But I had a previous career before all of that where I worked for, as the executive director of the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance and the policy director for the Housing Development Consortium. I spent uh, all of my energy on affordable housing and homelessness issues. I spent a ton of time in Olympia uh, working to build coalitions and drive new funding efforts. Uh, we had a lot of success winning both new tenant rights as well as new funding resources. Um, there's a thing called the Housing Trust Fund. We were the first ones to get it over $100 million. That's why uh, former Speaker Frank Chop has endorsed me. I've been endorsed by former Speaker Chop, several former school board members, uh, and the Seattle Times, as well as um, a really long list of frustrated parents who want to see change. And um, I will just say this, I love the Seattle Public Schools. Seattle Public Schools are an amazing institution and I'm running because I wanna make sure they stay that way. Thank you. Um, Laura Marie, uh, question number one. Hi, Ben, I'm Laura Marie Rivera. And as a former school board candidate, I have to ask you, why are you running for school board? Uh, well, the honest answer is probably because uh, I am and you probably were a little bit nuts to do this. Um, it's a little bit of a bonkers thing to do, but I'll give you a, a more complete answer. Um, I'm running for school board because I believe that every kid in Seattle deserves a great public education and a great public school and that Seattle schools should be for every kid. Our city is home to the most talented educators in the United States, the most innovative companies some of the most talented students and some of the most generous voters when it comes to levies and supporting both schools and so many other programs. But if we don't make some really serious changes in Seattle public schools, I think we are at risk of losing a lot of what we have built over the last several decades. Over two years alone, Seattle public schools face over a $200 million budget shortfall. That's by the way, after spending all of our rainy day fund in last, to, to fund this year's budget deficit. As a result, the district is clearly laying the groundwork to close neighborhood schools because they believe that will help close their budget deficit. They also are doing so in the name of increased efficiency and efficient use of dollars. But closing schools will not bring back the thousands of kids we're losing in declining enrollment. It won't shrink our operating costs and it won't balance our budget. More terribly, it will not change the staggering inequality we see in educational outcomes. Only a third of students furthest from educational justice right now are meeting targets for third and seventh grade math and reading. That is unacceptable. We need a new vision for Seattle public schools. We need one that is expansive, broad, and bold. We need to challenge the status quo, not accept it. I was endorsed by the Seattle Times because they believe I will fight the status quo and demand change. I'd love your vote. Uh, thank you. Um, Chelsea, uh, why don't you take question number two? Hi, Ben. Um, okay, enrollment in Seattle public schools has declined since 2020. What steps would you take to reverse this decline? Yeah, I'm gonna put a finer point on your question because it's, it's a terribly important question. Right now, if you look at this district's own projections, 
we are on pace to lose 15% of our enrollment. Our enrollment will decline by 15% between two years ago and 2032. That is a staggering loss of students. Not just because of the funding crisis that it creates, because Seattle Public Schools, like every other public school in the United States, public school system is funded based on the number of students that it, that it supports, but it, be, it represents a shrinking of our ambition as a school system. We are serving fewer kids. One of the biggest challenges is that we don't actually know why. There are a bunch of theories, theories about housing affordability, theories about the flight to private school, but the district needs to do a better job digging into why. We need to interview the families that are leaving. We need to find out why they're leaving. We need to look at the absenteeism rates and figure out why are those kids not coming back. My gut belief says that one of the main reasons we are seeing enrollment decline is because families don't see themselves in Seattle public schools anymore. What that means is they don't see the lighthouse programs that attract you to public school. They see cuts in things like band at Washington Middle or the mock trial program or the cuts to HCC. HCC is a flawed system. I'm not trying to defend the way it was implemented, but families need those programs to see themselves in Seattle public. And if we don't offer them, they're just going to opt out. And we're going to end up with a school system that is only the school system of last resort. It's not a unifying melting pot for all kids. That's unacceptable. That's not the vision of Seattle Public Schools that we want 10 years from now. I'm running to change that. Uh, thank you. Um, question number three, um, Toby. Well, I think this is a good follow-up question to that. How will you uphold the rights, dignity, safety, and inclusion of all students? And what would be your specific focus to do so? Yeah, let's take each one of those words one at a time. By the way, another terribly important question. Let's start with safety. So we I was actually motivated to run because of the shooting at Ingram. I lost a really dear personal friend when I was in high school to gun violence. It was a searing experience for me personally. It profoundly shook me. I was a high schooler. I had no idea how to process that. Thankfully, it wasn't at school. It was not. At, it was in a different environment. So I wasn't worried for my own personal safety, but it was deeply upsetting to me. Every kid at Ingram went through that, and they went through the trauma of having that happen in their school. We have to do better as a school system in tackling that problem head on. School boards can't change gun rights policy. I know that. But we can insist that every school have the resources that they need to understand which kids are at risk. We can insist that we understand why that happened, which we still have not seen. We still have not seen a detailed analysis of what flaws led to that problem. Let's talk about inclusion. Seattle public schools are wonderful, but, and uh, by the way, like we have, we have, the state agrees that it has a, uh, a fiduciary duty to fully fund public education, but even the state would agree that they do not fully fund special education. We need to go back to Olympia and tell them you have to finish the job. You have to fully fund special education. And then we have to use those dollars to increase the inclusivity of our classrooms. And we have to use those dollars to be innovative in how, in how we teach the kids who have the most need. Rights. Look, the reality is that the rights of people like trans people are under assault all across the United States. We have to ensure that that does not have any place in Seattle public schools. And I think we can do that by having a strong voice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, question number four, um, Sherry. Hi. Um, what are your thoughts on addressing the budget deficit? And if necessary, how would you approach deciding which schools to close? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna try and show you my shirt here. This this shirt, this is my this is my t-shirt. It just says don't close schools. This is what I wear to every campaign event. It's what I wear to farmers markets, it's what I wear when I knock on doors. It's what I wear to every appearance I do now is a t-shirt that just says don't close schools. And there's a simple reason. It is a total fallacy that closing schools will save us money and will solve our budget problem. That is false. I do not believe that closing schools will solve our budget deficit. By the way, Dr. Jones, our superintendent, also believes that. 
but we're still on a railroad track to closing schools. And the district is not being straight with the people of Seattle that they are, they are planning to close schools. That when the district talks about closing schools or when people who think that we have to do it, talk about it, they rely on two arguments. The first is that we have to close schools to save money. The problem is that if, unless you're gonna lay off all of those teachers and all of that staff and fire them, you're not gonna reduce your operating expenses. We're just gonna reassign those people to other schools. In fact, we're gonna spend money to mothball those schools. We're gonna have to move all the chairs out and all the desks. It's gonna cost us dollars. This, so that doesn't work. The second thing they'll argue is that it's a more efficient use of things like a principal, that if you have an under-enrolled school, well, now you've got a principal that's you know, being underutilized. The primary duty of education is not efficiency. The primary duty of education is education. We should not be optimizing for efficiency of dollars. Just look at what happened in Chicago. Chicago, 10 years ago, they closed 50 schools in the name of budget deficits, efficiency, and better educational outcomes. And if you go look, they failed on all three. They still have a budget deficit. They still have bad, ed the, the, in fact, the kids who came from schools that were closed had worse educational outcomes. And in the process, they disrupted those kids' lives. What we have to do is reinvest in our small schools. We have to put more programs into those small schools to get kids to see the power of those schools and use small schools as a source of strength, not a liability. That's my answer. Um, thank you. Um, let's see, have any hands raised? If not, I actually have a question, um, a follow up. Uh, oh, sorry, somebody else. Uh, Toby, why don't you ask the first follow up? So this is follow up. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just really curious, I, and I don't know the answer, so hopefully you do. What's the relationship between the demographics of uh, loss of students to the private sec private schools versus the demographics of the city having a younger uh, bunch of techies <laughs> who don't have kids in schools? Well, uh I'll give you my answer, but I'll, I'll tell you the, I'll give you a two-part answer. The first and most important thing that you should hear is that the school district needs to answer that question, and they have not. They need to actually answer to the people of Seattle, our enrollment is declining, here's why. All they've said so far is our enrollment is declining, therefore we need to close schools. That's not the right response. That's not good enough. My theory, because I happen to know from looking at data that private school enrollment is going up and it's harder and harder to get a spot in a private school in Seattle. In fact, private schools are only expanding. They're building bigger and bigger buildings and housing more and more kids. Just look at Seattle Academy. It's basically tripled in size in the last 10 years. Private school enrollment is going up because families don't see Seattle public as an option for them if they want to demand a higher achieving education for their kid. And that's just false. My wife went through Seattle Public and she had a top-notch education. My daughter went to Bryant. That was as good an education as I got in private schools in Washington, DC. It is, Seattle Public has all the ability to deliver that level of education. Thank you. So I have a question. Um, um, so uh, school just started yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. My my daughter just started third grade. Her class, um, they cut one of the teacher positions in third grade, and she now has 32 students in her class. Um, yep. Something like that, acceptable. And what, what does that do to, um, I guess, what does that do to our kids' educations when they have classes that big? And what, yeah, what can you do as a board? Uh, I'll just amplify your experience by saying a couple things. First, uh, my daughter has just just had her first day of school yesterday too, and overall it was great. But there are a couple classes that are really big. She's one that has I think thirty four kids in it. That's that's going to be hard for that teacher. Uh, I was doing a campaign event and I was meeting with voters and I talked to a voter who was really frustrated and I couldn't sort of figure out why. And his first question to me was, what are you going to do about class sizes? What's your plan to reduce class sizes? And I kept pulling out and trying to figure out what, uh, why are you asking what's going on there? And he's like, I'm a teacher. I've been a teacher in Seattle public for the last 15 years. And every year that I come back to school, they jam more kids in my class. They give me no more resources and no more help. And they expect me to get better outcomes. The thing we have to do as a board, first of all, is 
we have to demand real answers from the district about this. You can't just, we don't have a magic wand that we can wave and reduce classes. That doesn't exist. If it did, they would have done it. But we have to actually demand real answers as to why our class size is going up and what are we going to do to stop teacher attrition. But the, the best I can give you right now is ask really hard questions and demand real answers. Thank you. Um, Amanda. Yeah, this is a follow up from um, the third question about kind of uh, safety and inclusion. Um, we've seen through the continuing um, impact of the COVID uh, pandemic, um, a loss of um, folks with vulnerabilities and disabilities and protections in public um, and including schools and, uh, and, other, and other settings. Um, for for kids that may be living with folks that are more vulnerable or susceptible, yep. uh, how would you look at uh, addressing the risk that uh, occurs in schools, things like air quality standards that have been put out um, and addressing that and increasing safety for um, for for not just uh, transmission of diseases, but also other kinds of air quality issues that we're seeing increasing? Um, is, is your question about how do we ensure that our schools are safe places for kids who have, say, compromised immune systems? And, like and inclusive, yeah, for, for all of those or, or who are living with people that do because of the risk of transmitting to those, those people. And Well, the, the good news here is that actually Seattle Public has, a, has access to quite a lot of capital dollars where we are squeezed really hard on operating dollars, we have quite a lot of capital dollars at our disposal. And so one of the things that we need to do as a board is insist that those dollars go to improving existing schools so that we can keep them open and make them accessible to people who have either are immunocompromised or have family members who are, or who face those problems as opposed to what we're doing now, which to be honest is we're taking small schools closing them, demolishing them, and then consolidating into a small number of very, very large schools. The problem with a very, very large schools can be fine. It's okay to have a, a couple of schools that are 1600 kids, but if all your schools are really big and you don't invest any dollars in improving the air quality of your small schools, then basically you're gonna end up with very few options. And it doesn't have to be that way. We can actually do it differently. We can invest capital dollars in air quality. We can invest capital dollars in small schools and keeping them open. All those, all those things are available to us, but we have to actually challenge the district's sort of status quo thinking, which is that, no, what we should do is take all of our older schools, close them, and build really big new ones, which I, I think is a a really one size fits all approach to the problem. And Seattle's not a one size fits all city. Okay, um, Laura Marie. Hi again, um, Ben, can you tell us something that you think a lot of voters might not know about the school board director role and or something that you're particularly excited about? Uh, I think, couple of things. I think uh, voters might not know that it's an unpaid role and that it's actually pretty darn demanding um, uh, and that it is um, may maybe what they don't know is also one of the main reasons that I am running, which is that it's an oversight role. It, it's the Seattle Public Schools is about a $1.2 billion budget. It's funded by our taxes and the taxes of people, honestly, in the rest of the state. And the only way that we get to provide oversight to the, to the paid staff that run that district is by electing school board members. So excited is sort of a funny word. Like I'm not looking forward to it, say the way I'm looking forward to finally getting to eat dinner tonight or looking forward to it the way I was looking forward to going to PAX last weekend, which was really awesome. But I. I am motivated by accountability and um, oversight. I believe oversight is a team sport and I believe that democracy is not a spectator sport, that if you care about these things, you have to kind of get your hands dirty and get involved. 
And um, running for school board is terrifying and scary and frustrating and very demanding. And I'm sure if I were to get the job, it would be even more so. But I am motivated by oversight because if we want things to be better, we have to demand that they are. And the we happen to live in a country that gives us the way gives us a way to do that, which is elected oversight boards. And that's what I'm motivated to do. Thank you. Thank you. So um that we're um just about out of time. So um why don't we wrap up the recording and we'll just uh 